for somebody. Amen. I don't argue with God anymore. I don't. Amen. I just say it's for you. It's for you. It's for me too. The word comes right back at me. Got to do what needs to be done. But if you want to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, we're going to start reading. Then we'll be going to uh, the book of John. Matthew 12, verse 38. We're going to the book of Jonah. We're starting in chapter 1. See you, buddy. Don't smile from ear to ear. <laughs> Don't preach on me. <laughs> Amen. All right. I'm uh, sure if John in heaven should hear me, he's saying he's going to help me. I'm going to help him. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Amen. Yes. 12 and 38. Yeah. Bless you. I got a little. Nugget here. This, this, the Lord just helped me. All uh, right, starting at 38, it says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. They wanted to see a sign from Jesus. Here's what he told them. It says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There shall be no sign be given to it, but the sign of prophet, the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. Let's pray. Dear most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're going to thank you for your word. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you, Lord God. We love you, Jesus, Lord. We pray, Lord, for us, our ears, Lord God, and give us, Lord, take these lips of clay, Lord, and use them, Lord. We believe we're in your heart today. We believe, Lord God, Lord, that we're taking doing what you've asked us to do. We love you, Jesus. We appreciate you. Touch us, Lord. Touch our young ones. Touch our old ones. Lord, touch us all, God, that we can leave here today, Lord, a better Christian. Yes, Lord. Lord, and a better child with a better walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. amen. I'm going to read this next verse. It says, Then the Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn me. For the she's she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now I want you to go to the book of Jonah, start at chapter 1. If you don't fear, you don't have to stand for it. Just go along with me. And we just going to mind the Lord. And you know, I've, I've made uh, peace with God on some things. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not an eloquent speaker. I'm not very smart at all. But I am who I am by the grace of God. And I've come to... Peace with that with God. But uh, I love him, and I, I'm just going to give it to you as I, I give it to the fishermen preached, shepherds preached. I just know country boy works on cars and keeps water flowing. I'm going to preach. Because the Lord asked me to. I'm going to do it. Sissy, just close your eyes. That's right. When you get up there, and that starts bombarding your heart. And you see the countenance of men. Close your eyes. Amen. And, dur and just bear and sink the plow deep, as Brother Dewey says, and hold to the plow. Amen. But close them eyes. The word, that's what Paul did. Close your eyes and don't look at them. The Lord, when I first started out, this, when I first started out, I, you know where I started preaching? Right down here. Right down here. I couldn't get behind her for the longest time. The Lord never bid me to. I'd come and I'd read my scripture standing like this. I'd lay my Bible down on the altar and I'd preach. And I did it night after night after night after night. And then one night the Lord gave me a message on getting out of your comfort zone over in that Methodist church. So you know what I done? That time I got behind the pulpit. <laughs> And I preached the message, get out of your comfort zone. I'll never forget it. 
Never forget. Because, listen, close your eyes. And he preached me a long time with my eyes closed, Brother Wayne. He did. I'd lead from the pulpit with my eyes closed. And I'd just walk. And I'd just keep going, brother. And I'd just go right on down. And I'd, I'd just depend on God. And I'd just walk down the aisles. And I'd walk to and fro. But in the Lord guide me hand in hand. I tell you, all the way. He never left me. He never forsook me. Then one day he said, open your eyes. Open your eyes. And we can see. Amen. We can see. The Lord, we trust Him. We just got to trust Him. He'll be there. But I don't know why today, but the Lord does. Yes. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you. When we carry stuff, yes. it's precious. Yes. I'm a carrier of the Word. Yes. And it's precious. Yes. Whether you want to say I'm precious or not, I'm precious. Amen. Yes, Mommy will say I'm precious. Right. Yes, I'm precious. Amen. You're precious. Yes. You're carrying something today. Amen. You understand me? You're carrying something. I'm just minding the Lord. These are words from God. I ain't doing it. I don't know what to say. I just got this over there. He just said, you eat this, go to this, and I'm going to go with him. I love him, but it's for somebody. And I want you to listen to this phrase right here. <laughs> Chapter 1 of Jonah says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The son of Amittai saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And Jesus told us over in Matthew, he said, The sign that you are given is the sign of Jonah. He was three days and three nights in the well's belly. And he said, Listen, and then he even reminded us that what did Nineveh do? They repented. Yes, when Jonah went, listen, Jonah started out, He, God spoke to Jonah. said, Jonah, you go do this. Yes. Why is it every time, God, that I get down to the altar or I go to my bedside and pray, I'm just minding the Lord, that this thing comes before me every time. It don't seem like I can get a step ahead. It don't seem like I can do nothing. But every time this comes before, you know why? God said unto thee, Go and do this. God said unto thee. Put yourself in him. God said unto Jr. God said unto Stephanie. God said unto Wayne. God said unto Helen. God said unto me to go. He said go and preach unto Nineveh. He told Jonah. And Jonah said no. Jonah started on the way. He took and rigged him up. Got him some money and took and paid a fire to go to Tarshish. What was he doing? He was running from what God said for him to do. But God said Jonah, you go to Nineveh. Don't forget about this. He said Jonah, you go to Nineveh and you preach to them and you tell them and you cry out. But what did Jonah do? He got on the wrong boat. Yeah. Took it up on himself. Self gets in the way a whole lot. Took it up on himself. I don't want to go do that. They're sinners. They're, oh God, they're already hell bound. They're already doomed. I know the wickedness that they do. I know the things, the way they live. And they just ain't no hope for them. But God wanted to save a people. And you know why he called you out? Because he wanted to save a people. He wanted you to be a mouthpiece for him to save a people. I tell you today, don't be this Job. Amen. Yes, Lord. He paid the fire. Got on the boat. Went down and went to sleep. I've almost been there before. To where I got satisfied with turning God away and almost went to sleep on what God asked me to do. But I thank God for every time that I went to my altar. It was before my face. I thank God for every time that I went by my bed, wherever I was at, that it went before my face. I thank God that every time a preacher or a man of God preached the word and it hit me that it come before my face, that it kept coming before my face. Why? Because I, I needed to answer the call of God. I ain't talking about my preaching spirit. You know what I did with preaching? I heard so many testimonies from all the old preachers because they said they fought with God and they run from God, ended up going back and sin, then coming back and preaching. I said, I'm going to answer this quite quickly. Because I don't want to fight with this. I don't want to go through what they went through. So I went ahead and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to answer this quite quick. It wasn't very long, was it, Mommy? Then I went ahead and announced my calling to preach. Then I started out on top. No, I still ain't on top. And then I said, well, yeah, Lord, to God. I'm just a child of God. I'm just praying to God. I'm just praying for what he asked me to be. Amen. Yes. Right. Bless you, Obey God. God. There was, I don't know how many people was in Nineveh. It might tell him, John, I don't remember. 
How many people was there? But I know the Bible says it was a three days journey. Quite a few people in that place. Now that I believe that was walking though. That it was a three days journey. And the Bible says he went a day into it. And he started to preach. Yeah. And he started telling them about the kingdom. Of, he started telling them about their sins. He started telling them to turn from their sins. He started preaching, Brother Wayne. He didn't have the New Testament scriptures like we got today to preach. He preached. Him and Moses, I believe Moses, Noah, all of them, I believe they preached righteousness. They just preached what was right. And they preached and they know what was right. Why? Because they had an unction from God on what was right, what they seen and they know that was right today. But Jonah went into the city and began to preach to them. And the Bible teaches us that they repented in sackcloth and ashes. They fasted and their animals fasted. Their children fasted. Everybody in that city fasted. Why? Because God, praise be the Lord, listen today. But Jonah, before he went to preach, you know what he done? He got on that ship. Come on. Listen, immediately, things started happening. Storms started coming. It started filling that boat with water. They started saying, what's going on? What's wrong? They started bidding to their gods. Started talking to their gods. And then Jonah, they went and woke his sleeper up down there in the belly of the boat. And here they got him up out of there. And he said, "He, I know what's wrong. Right. I'm running from God. Yes. You all toss me over. Yes. It'll all be all right. It'll, it'll quit. Just toss God. me over. The storm will be over if you just toss me over. But Brother Wayne, they were such men. I believe they just, I believe they probably had integrity. Everybody that's got a God, they serve Him with integrity. They do, I don't care if it's Buddha, Muhammad, I don't care who it is. They will hold to their God. And then here they was, they didn't want to kill this man. They figured, well, if we throw him over, we're going to kill him. He's definitely going to die in this place. So here they went and they done all they could. Then they said, boys, we've got to throw him over. He's the problem. We've got rid of everything else. We get rid of cigarettes. Come on. Yeah. We get rid of snuff. We start dressing right. Come we on. stop drinking. We stop doing. I'm telling you, it's fresh from God. He just Come give on. this to me. And we stop all these things in our life. We sacrifice, sacrifice, yeah. sacrifice. Yeah, right. And then you know what we do? Like you saw a while ago, when you said, Praise be to God about that guitar. Right. You know whose problem was? It's your fault. Yep. You Come should on. look in the mirror. I should Come look on. in the mirror. When I look in the mirror, I can sacrifice everything. But if old JR ain't aligning up with the Word of God, God will fix us. Yes. My God, He'll fix us. What if we keep going before that mirror? Yes, He will. But then both, they got rid of everything. Yes. Everything. He said, lay aside all the weights of the sin that so easily beset you. Yes. Yes. That's what He asked us to do. They got rid of everything. Mm -hmm. They done it all. And they said, we're going to have to throw Him over. Yeah. They're going to have to throw Him over. So here's what they done. They throwed Him over. And then they went. They went and they even prayed to their God. They did some lots and some things there. And then here, God prepared a fish to take and swallow Jonah up. And here Jonah was in the belly of this fish. Here he was. Lord God, what a trip from God. What a trip from God to get his word. If he housed it in you, he's going to do whatever it takes to get it to where it needs to go. Do you understand? If you're the vessel of the living God and he has spoke, go you got to get there. Yeah. It don't matter. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, listen to that. It don't matter if you have to lay in a hospital six months. It don't matter if you have to halfway die. He's going to get his word wherever it's got to go. He's going to bring you down to the level you're supposed to be. And he's seat, not any seat. You're going to be a child of God and be well glory. And you're going to turn out what he said you're going to start out to be. Thank you, Jesus. We house something, my God. Yes, we house something, not just for here. I don't house this for just here. That's right. I got six kids yes. I house this for. I got a beautiful wife over that I house this for. Amen. It's the truth. And you all can say it about your families. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You house the Holy Ghost. You house this word. Why they need this word. You carry this thing. Your well, glory, your need of it might be at your house. Your need of it might be down at Walmart. Your need of it might be your husband or wife. Your need of it, you gotta go. You hear me? You gotta go. Hallelujah. You gotta go. Why? Because the Lord bids you so. Yes. He spoke the word unto you. Yes. How many times here? The Lord said unto Jeremiah. The Lord said unto Jeremiah. The Lord said unto Isaiah. The Lord said unto Ezekiel. 
The Lord said unto these, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. What did we see repetitious? They went. They said, no matter what stood before them, no matter what happened. Oh, did they sometimes say, I just ain't going to listen, Lord. I ain't going to speak your word no more. But you know what they ended up saying? It's like fire shut up in my bone. I can't help but speak his word that he's given to me. It's what I do. It's what he's called me out to be. I'm a child of God. Amen. Whether you're eloquent or not, you've got to do it. I love him. He's a good God. I praise him, church. But we're carrying a word. We're carrying a word. I love him. He's a good God. It's for somebody. It's for somebody. Hallelujah. It's for somebody. You gotta be, you gotta be. That's Jonah. You listen, I'm telling you. Because it don't matter what it takes. There's times nothing to God. Why? Because he holds your life in his hand. You understand? He holds your life in his hand. If you have to lay in an intensive care in a coma. Come on. For 10 years for him to get this word out that needs to go to this such and such or this so and so or that place, God will do it. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. He can do it. Amen. He can do it. Amen. It's ain't that, it don't mean nothing to him. No. Why? Because he holds you right. and he holds them. Yes. You know why? He wants to see them saved. God's long suffering. Yes. That none of us would perish, but all of us would come to repent. Right. That's the God that we serve today. Yes. So here we were. Nineveh over here still doing their thing. Jonah down here in the belly of the fish. The man of God. Posted done it. Sometimes I wait so long I'm ashamed of myself. Yeah. For not going to tell them sooner. Why? Because I could deliver them a long time ago and help them out of the thing they was going to. But I didn't. Why? Because I took and took them both to Tarshish instead of going to the person. Amen. Here Jonah. Oh God. Well. Lord. You saved me from dying. Look at the place I'm in now. Now I'm down on my knees. It's coming before my face. Now in my closet, it's coming before my face. Yeah. I'm seeing it everywhere I go. It's rebuking me. It's repugging yes. me. Yes. Everything that I do, I'm seeing it. Yes. I'm seeing it. I'm supposed to do it. Whether it's going to somebody and forgiving them today, you, you're supposed to do it. I don't care if it's praise be to God that's give somebody $20 and he keeps telling you every day, they need $20. You better go do it. It don't matter. You've got to do what God asked you to do. He called you out. He gave you his name. And he said, I need you to work. I need you to do what I asked you to do. Flesh gets prideful. God, I thank you. I thank you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being, there's a big word for it. But I'm glad I ain't no pride. I, I ain't got none, way. If I had pride, I just don't believe I could be here. I don't. Because I know in myself that I'm not good enough. I know in myself that my words is not to where some people would like them to be. I know in myself who I am. I know this, this man who I am. But I know something happened. I know God said unto J.R., go and preach my word. I know that he said that to me. And I can't deny that. And if I don't go do it, whose lives is in my hands? Who did I not help save? Who did I not listen? It's even for my kids. Even for my kids. If I'd have never stepped out on my calling, would my kids be filled with the Holy Ghost today? The ones that are with the ones that ain't yet on their way, would they want it? Would they even be where they're at today, Brother Wayne? We've got that. It's important for us to step out on what God says unto us. Amen. We look at the prophets and we look at them and say, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. You ever seen that? That's in chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. What did he do the second time? Mm -hmm. Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh. I don't want him to have to ask me the second time. Right. Come on, church. God help us. Yes. Come on, church. Amen. Yes. Lord, I don't want I don't want to go through the belly of the well. Right. Amen. We don't need to be a well of the belly of the well people. Right. We need to be a people to say, yes, Lord. Yes. We need to catch this rolling off our tongue. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. And go right on and do what he asked us to do. Why? Well, because Jonah, I know Jonah, listen, he's a man of God. But he got down the belly of that way. He started praying. He said, in the belly of hell, he cried out. In the belly of hell, he cried out. The seaweed wrapping around him. There's the ribs, the bones. There's it looks like an imprisonment place. And here it was. Only to get his attention, Brother Wayne. Only to get our attention. It takes this. Brother West preached the message. You got to don't let God burn your barley field. Sometimes he's going to do his things. Listen, to get your attention on where you need to be. And all we need to pray. And what I was praying about Ronnie. And God, if you burn these barley fields, just be merciful. Be merciful. Don't let him lose his life. Don't let him lose his life, God. Be merciful unto him as he's burning his barley fields. As he's down in that whale's belly, crying out. Then you know what? You'll get up one day. God took him. He gave that old fish an antacid. Made him puke him up on dry land. I got to get this out of me now. Amen. Puke him up and then the Lord said, go preach. Yes. Yeah. You go now. Lord, what we can what we can take and bypass by just being obedient. Amen. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Amen. Don't you want the good of the land? Yes. Don't you want the good of the land? Yes. Hey, you know, people, listen. All these things. Cars and houses and boats and lands and all these things is not important unto me. They shouldn't be important unto you. Right. They shouldn't. I was looking at Man, I got a big Porsche down there. I never get to say it on. I do. Got things that I never get to do. But you know what? I love the Lord. And my greatest purpose is to do what the Lord said unto J.R. to do. That is the greatest purpose in my life. It really is. You know, I, I, I used to be hard on myself for saying that I don't have enough family time. Here is family time. Amen. Amen. You understand? Can we agree upon that? Amen. This is just as good family time as any. God, well, God bless us to go out every now and then and do this and that. But right here, we ought to count this just as we should not take this right here and say, I ain't spent no time with you. Right here is family time. You, my God, you know what will happen? You'll start missing church and you'll start going out to the restaurant and it'll drag you plumb out of church. It'll take you places you don't want to go having this family time. We better have God first in our family. Then if he wants us to have a little extra, he can let us have it. But we better make sure God's needs is met first in our life. God's got needs he wants from us. Needs. It's what we're going to have here. Listen that he's a restorer of all things yeah. in our life. Yeah. Ask Pam. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Pam. Yeah. Who lost everything. Yeah. Down in the ditch. Down as low as you could go. Yeah. Ask her. Ask the ones that's been in that fish. In that belly of the well. Yeah. Addie was talking about them eagles. I'm going to send y'all that message. I sent it to mommy there if she ever gets it on her phone. I got it. Okay, you listen to that. You get that some way, you listen to the whole thing. You sit still and you turn it up loud enough for Wayne to hear it. And you take and you <laughs> listen to that. But she was talking about these eagles. And these eagles go through a period of moping. Yeah. You heard Brother Hawkins preach the one about eagles here yeah. where they busted that, their yeah. beak off and stuff. He didn't, he didn't get to the depth of how they got that on their beak. Yeah. He didn't get to the depth of where they come from back to that rock to get that off. And this man was teaching on these eagles and these eagles in a period of their life they live up to 100. He said he knows 128 years old is the one that he knows of. They live from the plumb up to 120, an eagle will. And then he said but then a period of 40 to 60, somewhere like that they get into a period of called moping. And then they go down into the wilderness, deep into a holler. And they sit down in this place and says they start walking around like a chicken or a turkey. They are not formed like a chicken or a turkey. They're not meant to be like a chicken or a turkey. Said their feet start. So this man's watched them eyeball to eyeball. He's watched them do this. And he had, he had Indians to take him to these hollers. 
and show them he, boy, he's life he dedicated to eagles and he took it to, and he preaches on them and he took it he said their feet swell up and they bust why because they're not you this earth is something that they're not used to walking on they're not even supposed to be in. their their claws is to catch meat and to catch things he said that an eagle's foot is so strong that it can take and hold to a a take of one 120 some pound kangaroo and carried itself he washed it for over a mile is how strong their feet are but here they come he said they get in this mopens period in the wilderness and he said they get down there and he said when this Indian took him down there he said he showed him said their heads was hung so low said their feathers was ruffled where they'd been rubbing around and trying to move and said their feet was swelled up said you can see it said old Indian went up there and picked up one he said pick up one preacher and he said, no. He said, I know what they can do to your hands. He said, no. They're so far dead. They ain't going to hurt you. He said, that Indian wretched him that eagle. And he said, he held to it and cried. He said, he held to it and cried. He said, look in his eyes. He said, what do you see in his eyes? He said, it was all scaly around his eyes. And, things. and an eagle, he taught a little bit before, that an eagle constantly cries. They're constantly, their eyes is wet and moist. And he said, as he held that, and he said, wait, he said, they put it back down. He said, you watch something, preacher. He said, let's go over here and hide. He said, why are we hiding. Why are we hiding, Indian? And he said, he said, just watch what happened. He said, they went over and hid in the brush. He said, here come. He said, they heard a squall. He said, look up. And he looked up, and here come these eagles in a straight line, eight of them. Said they come in a straight line. He said, You watch, preacher, what they do. He said, He what did he said, What do you notice about them? He said, Their feet's clutched like they're holding something. And here's what he done. He said, Here become pieces of rabbit, pieces of squirrel falling down to these eagles that was down in this valley. And they tuck and they skipped dropping it down. And then they washed them. And he said, Two of these eagles out of five went over and started scratching on that rabbit. He, that preacher said that Indian started shouting. He said, look, preacher, two of them's getting it. Two of them's made up their mind they're going to get out of this place. He said, two of them's going to do it. And then he took for his yes. God. Then he took it. He said, watch. He said, watch what they do. He said, these eight eagles went to circle and then a squall with everything in them. He said, what are they doing? He said, what are they doing, the Indian? He said, well, you know what they're doing? He said, they're crying out and giving them courage. I've been there. You can get out of here. And I know you can't. He said, they're giving them encouragement by squealing out. Yes, thank you. And he said, he's too. Eagles said as they was there, they went to flopping around, start exercising in wings and moving around. And he said, "Listen," but that preacher said, "I couldn't forget about them three. He said, "I looked and he said, Indian, what about these three eagles?" He said, "They're going to die right here in the wilderness." Oh he said, "It's up to each and every one of them." To go out and get that meat. He said, they're dropping it to them. I heard it last night in the revival. I looked at Josh. I said, there's a squall just went out tonight. There's a squall just went out tonight. So encouragement, there's some meat hit the ground. If everybody just take and grab it, they can get out of the valley they're in. But he took, listen, and he took and he looked and he took and went over and he went and this guy was there preaching a revival. And that Indian was taking him day after day to this place visiting. And he looked and that Indian come to him one day. And he said, I went and buried those three eagles. He said he took him to that place where he buried him. He said, I've buried 27 here since I've been doing this. 27 eagles that didn't make it out. But he said, I want you to go see the one that came out of here. And he took him out and he said, them eagles, he said, they made it to it. He said, what they do, they always go to a rock. He said, I want to take you to one that was eight weeks ago down in this place. He had a name for him. I forgot the name. It's Tanum or something like that. He said, I want to take you to Tanum. He said, Preacher, he said, there's 33 eagles you showed me today. How do you know the eagle? He said, because each eagle's got a certain rock that it goes to. And he said he went and seen this eagle. He said they pulled it up on his microscope thing. He said he looked at him and said he was beautiful. He said right now is his prior time. He said he looked and he said that eagle was backed up against that rock looking straight up to the sun. He said that tears was coming down his eyes. He said, I begin to pray with that eagle. He said, because he's looking up. He said, what he's doing is to pray to God. He said, then that eagle jumped off to the edge of that rock and took out and let out a big squall. He said, he and that eagle both went to shouting. He said, well, I pray to God. He said, he gave out the squall of victory. I made it to my rock and I'm making it where I need to go. That's where we need it, church. We got to stay at the rock and do what needs to be but he said in that valley he said there's this calcium built up on their beak and he said that it covers their holes where they breathe and he said when they get to that rock they start beating that off <laughs> they start beating that off and you know what they do they shed every feather 
Every feather, there's a new coat put on. It takes you back to the one to come back from the hog pen. I got a ring for you, son. I got a rope for you. I got a pair of sandals put on your feet. Yeah, yeah baby, yeah. you don't think you're important to God. A prodigal's just as important as a firstborn, baby. God. Why? Because Jesus said he was lost and now he's found. Well, Lord, he was dead, but now he's alive. That's who Jesus is. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You see, I got fascinated with so much stuff he told. He said he went to this museum place that dedicated everything they had to save the eagles because they're an endangered species. He said he went there. He said this is where this 128 year old eagle is. He said this guy went in the back. He got two eagles. He come out holding them. He handed them that preacher. He said I put my gloves on. Them steel gloves. He said and I was holding them. He said, preacher, tell me which one's older. He looked. He said, you're trying to trick me. We're the same age. He said, this one's 128 years old, and this one's 16 months old. Oh my God. He said, Ed, glory be to God. He said, eagles every year shed, their, shed their, their coat. They put on a new one. They put on a, they take their beaks. They put on new ones. They keep listening, praise be to God. Their talons, they take and they rub them off. They bring back new ones. God is restorer. He's a refresher. He's the one that can take. Listen, people say you can't. I've been refilled and refilled and refilled and refilled. And refilled. Lord, take me back and refill me. God, I need it. Don't ever be ashamed to go up to the preacher man or somebody and say, I need a refilling. I ain't felt God in a while. I feel a little bit down. I'm in the valley. I need a feeling today. I need something in my life because God if he's got it for the eagles he's got it for us in the Bible speaks a lot about eagles and he bases us as those eagles he really does I love him he's a good God church but we can learn we can learn from these things and now you know what after listening to that message I'm going to send it to all of you and I want you to listen to it I hope you always at home listen to it now I sent it to him I said you got to listen to this buddy it's going to change your life Oh God, I'm beginning to eat my stuff out of my skin. I'm of my sight. God, that seed beating that beak. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus. Oh God, take it in faith. Oh, give me some new ones, God. Man, getting back to that rock is what matters. Getting back to that rock is what matters. Yes, Lord. He's a good God. They keep that rock. They keep the same rock, Brother Wayne. They keep the same rock. They don't lose that rock. They always go back to that rock. And that's what we are. We go to our rock and His name is Jesus. We receive our strength. We get restored by this man called Jesus. Oh, we got everything in Him, church. We got everything in Him. When we're down in the valley, we got others to encourage us. He told us that we got to listen today. We got to take them bare the infirmities of the week. <coughs> bare them. Hold them up. Lift them up. Hold them. Be there for them. Everybody ain't strong as everybody else sometimes. Amen. But I've been just as weak as anybody else. Do you hear me? Yeah. I've been just, when this little baby right here, when we was going through court case stuff, when we was trying to get her, I'm telling you, I was at a place where my faith wasn't a little good. And I had to have you all praying. I did. I had to have you all praying. I wasn't worth nothing. I didn't feel like I was worth anything. So God, I can I hear it. When you're the one there hearing it, it's done. Don't ever, I, don't ever tell anybody when they go to the doctor and say you've got cancer. Don't ever look at them and say well, you shouldn't let them told you you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done that. You've got to be their faith. Amen. You've got to be the place that they lodge. Yes. You've got to be the man or woman that can stand on your knees and praise for them and say, Lord, help them lift them up. Because why we they can lodge in our faith until they get where they need to go. Yes. It's the truth. Amen. Yes. It's ain't a down and way. This is an uplifting way. Yes. Yeah. This, this whole word right here is for edification. Amen. That's building up. Amen. Building up. And we can all make it today, church. Amen. We can. But I'm telling you, we always got to go back to the rock. Right. When I see these kids come and get prayer in, in different places and things, I say, Lord, let them always remember to come to the rock. Never let them depend on something else but this right here. Amen. The rock. They got to keep coming Amen. to the rock. If you don't keep depending on the rock, listen, I got two girls that are scaring me to death. I do. They're getting old. Right. Daddy ain't going to be there. I want them to know to go to the rock. Because, yes. you want to get close to daddy, he's at that rock. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's at that rock. Amen. you got to go to that rock. Yes. 
most important thing in our lives is we should be to see our children saved. Yes. Yes. See our children saved. See people saved yes. in our life. It really is. They said, I love the Lord. So, the world's got so much stuff thrown at them. Oh, just so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, God, we need to magnify God. Amen. We need not make God a drag. No, don't make him a drag. I hope my kids right now say, man, I, I, want, I want to do what my daddy's doing right now. I want to feel what he's feeling right now. I want to see. I want them tears like he's a flowing right now. I want them, I want them to want that. Want that. I don't care about the stuff at the house. I don't care about the stuff. That, it's all going to burn. But what I'm feeling right now is going to take me to glory. Do you hear me? What I'm feeling right now is going to take me to glory. It ain't none of that stuff I got at the house. It's all going to burn. It's all going to go away. And it's going to try to keep me out of church. Amen. Amen. We've got to forsake all and follow Jesus. That's what he asked us to do. I love him, church. He's a good God. We've got to keep on. Listen, whatever it will for about Jonah, you better get on the move. Better get on the move. Don't end up in that well's belly. Don't end up in that place of regretting I didn't go. I love the Lord. He's a good God, church. But I'm thankful. But I'm going to send y'all a message. And I want y'all to sit down to get you. It's, it's long. It's two parts. There's a first part and a second part. But it's all on the same thing. And and you got to listen to it all, though. You don't skip around. you got to listen to it all. But after you go back, you'll listen to the second half more than you do the first. You will. It's the one that really, really helps you. I love you. But I, I want to give this preacher's testimony that he gave on that statement before you all hear it yourself. He... Talking about his grandpa. He said when he was a little boy, his grandpa was put in prison for making white lightning. He says in there, I believe it was 16 years, wasn't it? Six, 16 years. He said he was a very mean man. He said his grandpa. He said he didn't even want to be around his grandpa. He said he's mean. He said his grandpa got out of prison and said his daddy. He said his daddy was a weeping man. He said, my daddy would go before God. Let me remind you, this is a Baptist preaching all this. And he said, my daddy was a weeping man. He said, my daddy, he said, told God. He said, God, he said, I'll meet you from midnight, somewhere between midnight and dawn, every day if you'll save my daddy. He said, my daddy worked in the cotton mill. He said, my daddy worked eight hours, and he, could, he preached 45 revivals a year. He said, and he would go and preach somewhere. He was in Georgia, and he'd go somewhere in Tennessee. He said, my daddy wouldn't get in sometimes till 5 in the morning. He said, but he never failed to go to that bathroom and get down at that bathtub and cry out for his daddy. He said, for 13 months, he said, this my daddy went in that bathroom. He said, I'd wake up for school. He said, my daddy would still be in there. I'd take him crying out to God, sometimes go to work with no sleep. He said, come back home, put his suit on, go preach, come back home, go to work, pray for his dad, do it all, all these and he said on the 13th, about the end of the 13th month, or the beginning of the 14th month, he said, my daddy come running through the house. The Lord has saved my daddy. He said, get ready. He said, the Lord saved my daddy. He said, he said, well, he said mommy looked at her and said, honey, said, we ain't got a phone. Your daddy's 25 miles away. He said, how do you know? He said, the Lord just lifted my burden. My daddy's been saved. He said, don't you know the bus came in at 9.30 that morning. My grandpa got off a bus and said both of his hands was up in the air and the tears down his head. He said, you don't even need to tell me, daddy. He saved your soul. And that's what he done. And he dwelt, well, Lord, we can't give up. We got to keep going to God and never do it. If we tell God we'll be there, let's be there. And he said, I'll meet your need. But we got to be serious with God. He's everything. But man, that blessed my soul. This was what encourages us. It is. I want my testimony one day to be like that. I really do. I want a testimony like that. Don't you? I want something like that for the people and for my children to remember that what my daddy done, God worked for him. And I know he's the same God when they're down in that deepest valley that I, he will work for me. He'll lift me up. He'll put me through this just like he did my parents or my friend or my pastor, whoever it is that you hear it from, God will do it for you. He really will. He's a good God, church, but we can't give up. We've got to keep meeting God. What we said, when it all gets lined up, God will move. Like I told you, He holds them. Sometimes we might worry about them dying too much, and we move more than we should, or save more than we should. I'm just 
by the Lord. Come on. We're, we ought to say, Lord, you have them in your hand. God is like me. Control. You hold me, and I'm trusting that you're holding them. And Lord, I don't want them to die lost. I don't, I'm going to keep meeting you, Lord. I'm going to keep meeting you. Boy, I don't see how God can turn down that dedication to you. Amen. I really don't. I really don't. I don't see how I believe he'll move for people like that. I really do. I ain't setting you up for a downfall. I ain't setting you up for a downfall. I'm saying be serious with God, and he'll be serious with you. That's what I'm saying today. He's a good God. He'll trust you. He'll, if you just trust in Him, He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. You don't have to worry about your house. You don't have to worry about your clothes. You don't have to worry about your food. I'm sick of hearing Biden and Zelensky and Putin. I've heard so much of that over the past month or so. I'm sick of it. We better be on the government of Jesus. And upon His shoulders is this government. Do you understand? This government has nothing to do with Zelensky, Putin, and Biden. This is Jesus' government. This is His and I. And we need to be worried about fulfilling. And listen, our King's desires is in us. Our King's desires and His name's Jesus. He's a good God, church. We need not to worry about our finances. Have that into a upper rough, rough roar in our life. We need not to stuff. No, if you work and go to work, go to work, come home. The day comes and you can't go to work, something happens. If the mark comes, I don't know. This rapture thing, I don't know what, how it's going to happen. Lord takes us out of here, fine. But if he don't, you better be ready to endure some time. That's the only thing I can say about it. You hear me? That's the only thing I can say about it. Oh, I, but Lord God, I hope you're right and I get out of here before everything. But if I don't, I'm ready for some enduring. Ain't you? Persevere to endure. Right, way. we got to be ready for this thing. Why well, I'm holding on to Jesus is going to be the thing. We better be able to go home from work and say, Honey, they asked me to take that mark and I ain't going to take it. We'll be okay. Okay. We'll be okay. Why? Because he asked us not to. Amen. He said, if we take that thing, listen, you know what? We're separated from him for life. It don't matter. You don't, there's no hope for you. And he said, this is something that you will not be able to buy, sell, and trade. Plainly. It's going to be a mark upon your forehead or upon your hand. And you ain't going to be able to buy, sell, and trade. Don't fall for this stuff. Don't fall for this stuff that it's all spiritual. That it's all spiritual. Okay. If it was all spiritual, he wouldn't have brought in the buy, sell, and trade. Because that thing at the standard, that thing at the cash register don't know if I love God or not when I walk up to it. Do you understand? That you know what? He's going to brand his people like they do cattle. And he's wanting a mark on their forehead and in their hand is what this beast wants. That's the way they are known. That's the way they are known. And that's the way God's people's known. By not having it. But, oh God. We're going to have a seal, Wayne. Amen. It's going to be on our forehead. Amen. Oh, and his name's Jesus. Amen. Ain't you glad? Amen. Ain't you glad? Amen. His name's Jesus. Yeah. He's the mind. Amen. The mind. Right. If he's got our mind, when these days come, we ain't got to worry about it. Right. This we ain't got to worry about it. He's already stuck me all around my house and had me touching everything. My wife, my kids, they're just temporal. Everything's just temporal. Everything unseen is everlasting. And I'm preaching for the unseen things. Amen. I'm preaching for the unseen things yes. to happen in our life. Yes. The unseen things that happen in our life. I've watched things happen during this revival and it's excited me so much. It's gave me so much hope, more hope yeah. of things to come. It really has. Amen. He's a good God. Seeing people move and people that's, people just, last night was so awesome you just couldn't, it's just, it's there's no words to explain. Yeah. You just had to be there. No words. Really wouldn't. I could sit and tell y'all about it all I want to. You wouldn't cry as much as you did for that eagle. It's the truth. And it meant a whole lot more than that eagle to me. Really? Because I, listen, I heard it crying last night. I seen the meat fall. I seen it all happening. I seen the meat that was fell a long time ago come to pass last night. It's the truth. God ain't no respecter of persons, and he's not a respecter of time. Don't matter. Time don't matter. Once I got that revelation that time don't matter because everybody wants to take it the days with the Lord and the days one day and that means the end of earth is going to be one day. I figured out that this is, time just don't mean nothing to him. It don't mean nothing to him. And we can take him to it. I, I don't want to debate about if it means one day or if it means a thousand years. Right. I believe he's saying it don't matter to me. If it's a day or if it's a thousand years, it don't matter. It's all the same to him. He can do a good work. He can do a great work in one day. Oh yeah. It's the same way as in a thousand years. But if I'm in that, if I'm in that place, I shouldn't be. Lord, give me the thousand years. 
I've got to make it right. Amen. I've got to make this right. Because I'm going home one day. Amen. He's a good God, church. I love you. And I feel that I've obeyed the Lord. I feel that somebody's got to touch. Amen. I really do. And I thank you for what he's done. I, I love him for what he's doing in my heart. you got to love him for what he's doing in your heart. In your heart. You've got to have a personal relationship with God. Don't base it on nothing else but you and God. Take and do it. You've got to. If you don't, you're going to be let down. I'll let you down. Wayne will let you down. Sis, you're going to let me down sometimes. We'll all, but God will never let us down. And he'll never let us put each other down if we'll stay in his love. He won't. He'll want each and every. We should look at each and every one of us. And Brother Dave said last night, how can we house the Holy Ghost but have a mind to want to kill somebody? That's right. We can't. We can't. Yeah. I, I don't care. You've got the Holy Ghost and you want to kill somebody at your building because they're stealing your stuff. Your heart's wrong. Amen. Your heart's wrong. Oh, I'll kill them with that gas can. Right there, right there at my car, I'll kill them. Shoot them dead. I've heard it. You better get your heart fixed. Yeah. This is not right. This is and claim to be housing the Holy Ghost. No, sir. That's not God. Amen. It's not God. It don't line up. Amen. It really don't. And for us to want to see somebody fall, and I've been guilty of this before, I smile a little bit when I know somebody fell that stood real proud. Wait a minute. Yeah. They stood proud, and you know they had a proud spirit. Uh -huh. And then when you see them fall, you kind of, a little bit. Little you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Right. I was ashamed of myself. Lord stuck it to me. And I was ashamed of We ought to be ashamed of ourselves when we feel that little chuckle come through. I know they would. I know they'd fall hard. Lord God, why didn't you be a mattress and help them? Let them fall on something a little bit softer than the way they fell. It's the truth. I love him. He's a good God. He's fixing things in my life. And we all got to be fixed. You know? We all we got to have traditions of men out. Out. And we've got to have the love of God in. Amen. God's ways. Right here. Right there it is. I believe this with my whole heart. Amen. That if I stick with this, I'm going to make it to heaven. Right. If I stick with this, right. I'm going to make it to heaven. Amen. If Jesus is the only name I say from here on out, it's the name of God. And I believe I'm going to make it by knowing that name and walking in that name. He's a good. Give the Lord a hand clap.